Well, good morning, and thank everyone for coming. There's a couple of housekeeping uh, announcements I'd like to make. First of all, the washrooms are just behind us to my left. Uh, secondly, I just want to give you an, an idea what the agenda is. We have the media conference at 10.30 this morning. That will be the three of us presenting, and I'll introduce my fellow speakers in a moment, uh, followed by uh, any questions that the media may have. Then we're going to take a 45-minute break where we can move our cameras around. Um, and then after that, Veronique is going to uh, do a uh, French translation or a summary for, for the audience of uh, Dr. Carpenter and my remarks. And then we'll open that up to questions from, from the general audience. And then after that, we will, submit, we will start the formal submissions from the Canadians uh, who are here in person and also who are Skyping in from across the country. Uh, so, Veronique, I think you wanted to make that announcement too. Okay, donc ce matin, nous allons procéder premièrement avec la conférence de presse. Ensuite, ce sera la place pour la, la période de questions pour les médias. Nous allons prendre une courte pause de 45 minutes. Euh, ensuite, je vais revenir moi-même et je vais vous donner un résumé en français de ce que Dr. Carpenter et M. Clegg vont dire en anglais pendant la conférence de presse. Euh, les citoyens lors de cette période-là vont pouvoir poser leurs questions et ensuite nous passerons à la période euh, que ça sera la parole aux citoyens et que les gens pourront euh, prendre, prendre la parole et on passera aux consultations publiques. Je vous remercie. So we know that many of you have come from Montreal and Dr. Carpenter is between engagements from China and California. So we thank everyone for taking the time to be here today. I would like to thank the Shadow Laurier Hotel for turning the Wi-Fi off in this room for those individuals with electro electrosensitivity so they're able to join us. For those individuals with electro electrosensitivity so they're able to join us. My name is Frank Clegg and I'm the CEO of Canadians for Safe Technology. People also point out that I was president of Microsoft Canada for 15 years. I like to remind them that I was involved in child internet safety most of my career at Microsoft. My wife and I raised our children while the internet was being born, and I was involved in developing anti-predatory awareness tools to help law enforcement capture pedophiles, and spoke out about the importance of parental controls on the internet in Canada. I have an urgent message now about how wireless devices have proliferated our lives much faster than our understanding of their harmful effects. That's why I helped create C4ST, and that's why we're here today. Health Canada has invited public input into its revisions for Safety Code 6, the Wireless Microwave Safety Guidelines Policy. Our very strong message is that this safety code fails to protect Canadians from their own cell phones. It fails to protect children from all-day Wi-Fi in schools. It fails to protect anyone from a cell tower or a smart meter that may be located across the street or outside the window of their home or office building. Wireless devices are now in the hands of almost every Canadian, including children and wireless radiation surrounds us ubiquitously everywhere we go. Safety Code 6 limits that were established before this internet, Safety Code 6 limits were established before the internet even existed. It is outdated and it failed to keep up with the times. More importantly, it has failed to keep up with the established science. Other countries, including Russia, Today we will hear from Dr. David Carpenter, who has decades of experience in this field. We'll also hear from Quebec Region Lead, Ronnie Griappel, about what it's like to live with EHS, the medical term for electrohypersensitivity. And there are many supporters here today who will testify and make their own submissions that will be forwarded to Health Canada prior to the deadline of July 15th. I would first like to present the submission to Health Canada from a group of Canadian doctors. These are medical doctors specializing in environmental causes of illness. Many of them were the ones treating pesticide exposures, asbestos, secondhand smoke, 
and indoor air, air contaminants long before the rest of the medical system recognized it. They couldn't be here today as they're all running their clinics. However, Dr. Rena Bray, the director of Ontario's Environmental Health Clinic at Women's College Hospital in Toronto, has agreed to speak with reporters if anyone would like to, to, to have further comment from a family physician. The Environmental Health Clinic is Ontario's only government-funded clinic that specializes in the environmental causes of modern disease. Dr. Bray reports that the, the clinic is receiving an increasing number of referrals from physicians across Ontario. Their patients are displaying symptoms that seem directly related to their exposure to or use of cell phones, Wi-Fi, cordless phones, smart meters, cell towers, and even baby monitors. Dr. Bray says that government-funded clinic that specializes in the environmental causes of modern disease. Dr. Bray reports that the, the clinic is receiving an increasing number of referrals from physicians across Ontario. Their patients are displaying symptoms that seem directly related to their exposure to or use of cell phones, Wi-Fi, cordless phones, smart meters, cell towers, and even baby monitors. Dr. Bray says that doctors in Ontario are alarmed by the lack of re regulation around these devices and the absence of caution. To summarize today's submission signed by the Canadian medical doctors, they state, out of sincere concern for the health of Canadians at all stages of life, from the developing fetus through childhood and into adulthood, we respectfully request that, number one, Health Canada develop and support strategies to raise awareness about microwave radiation impacts and to minimize prolonged exposure to what microwave radiation in schools and other places where children are regularly exposed. Number two, as Health Canada has acknowledged that a full literature review was not part of its latest update to Safety Code 6, we request a comprehensive literature review for all late age ranges with less reliance on industry funded studies. And finally, number three, Health Canada provide guidelines and resources to assist Canadian physicians in becoming apprised of microwave exposure and related health problems that may be associated with overexposure or sensitivity. This statement was prepared in response to Health Canada's invitation for public input on the scientific and technical aspects of its revisions to Safety Code 6. The doctors respectfully submit this statement, which is printed in full in your information folders. It includes references from current scientific literature. The Canadian doctor's submission is backed up by more than 50 of the world's leading scientific experts in the field of microwave and biological research. Dr. Carpenter will speak to the science declaration in a moment. Just before that, however, I feel it's very important to highlight that C4ST has identified more than 130 high quality scientific papers which show that wireless devices can ha cause harm at very low levels, but these studies were omitted by Health Canada in its latest revision of Safety Code 6. Health Canada uses weight of evidence as their argument for dismissing these studies, but they do not publish their criteria or, the for or their formula in this weight of evidence evaluation. All this formula seems to do is exclude the studies that find microwave radiation causes harm. Through this elusive weight of evidence formula, Health Canada has omitted a significant portion of the evidence that evaluates the potential harm from wireless devices. So we've taken these 139 studies and broken them into eight different uh, topics. And uh, we, what we found were 23 studies from cancer and genetic damage. 14 studies show harm to female and male infertility. 30 studies that identify impairment to development, learning, and behavior from conception right through to old age. 44 studies that show effects on the brain and nervous system. Seven studies demonstrating effects on the eye, and four with cardiovascular effects. The largest group biochemical changes had 65 studies that we've identified. 
Finally, we have identified eight studies that show a link to electrosensitivity. All 139 studies have not been reviewed by Health Canada, and even more disturbingly, 75% of these studies, that's over 100, were submitted directly to Health Canada in 2013 by C4ST. Health Canada gets an F for effort on this update of Safety Code 6. C4ST is officially submitting again all of these studies as part of Health Canada's request for public <coughs> input. Today, C4ST is asking Health Canada for three actions. First, invest in the necessary resources, invest in the necessary resources to re-engineer the process used to update Safety Code 6 and complete a proper, thorough review of Safety Code 6 based on international best practices. Number two, respect the medical director's request to provide guidelines and resources to assist Canadian physicians in becoming apprised of microwave exposure and related health problems. And finally, number three, minimize prolonged exposure to microwave radiation, especially in schools and other places where children are regularly exposed. As I said earlier, the medical submission to Health Canada is backed up by more than 50 of the world's top science, scientific researchers in this field. Among them is Dr. David Carpenter, who holds a medical degree from Harvard University and is currently director of the School of Public Health at Albany University in New York. He's also director of the Institute for Health and Environment, which is a collaborating center for the World Health Organization. Dr. Carpenter has, has authored 370 peer-reviewed publications and as well as written six chapters, or six books on this topic. By all accounts, he is a leading expert in the human health effects of environmental contaminants. Dr. Carpenter, welcome. Thank you, Frank, and I'm very happy to be here this morning. 52 scientific experts working independently and through universities around the world support the submission to Health Canada by Canadian doctors. The reason we support this and assert this assertion and the request of these Canadian doctors is because Health Canada's Safety Code 6 is based on a false premise and outdated analysis of radio frequency radiation research. Canada's Safety Code 6 is locked in the past and has disregarded or minimized many recent studies such as those demonstrating DNA damage, effects on brain behavior, altered protein synthesis, stress responses, and detrimental biological and human health effects that occur at intensities well below the existing safety code six limits for human exposure. This means that Health Canada's guidelines do not protect Canadians against the exposures they may already be receiving daily from their wireless devices. The World Health Organization has classified electromagnetic fields at both extremely low frequency in 2001 and radio frequency in 2011 as, quotes, possible human carcinogens, in quotes. These are the same radio waves emitted by cell phones, by Wi-Fi, cordless phones, cell towers, smart meters, baby monitors, and an increasing number of consumer product devices and products, <coughs> such as refrigerators and automobiles. As Frank said, other governments have already begun to take the emerging science seriously. As with our understanding of AIDS, SARS, and other emerging public health crises, some countries adopt protective measures more swiftly than others. RF exposure guidelines in Italy and Switzerland, China and Russia are now based on the evidence of biological effects at low intensity exposures and have been adjusted to be about 100 times more stringent than those in Canada, the US and the UK. These countries continue to rely on outdated guidelines to cause tissue heating. The governments taking greater precaution are saying that changing cells is unacceptable to its citizens. 
And it is no longer appropriate to wait until the body gets hot to understand that damage is being done. The purpose of medicine and public health is to identify those factors that will increase the risk of disease and to take steps to reduce exposure to these before a tumor starts to grow or other diseases appear. If this latest revision of Safety Code 6 is allowed to stand, it will keep Canada a generation behind when it comes to microwave radiation safety. The precautionary principle was developed at a United Nations conference and states that action should be taken when serious risks to the public and the environment exist without waiting for full scientific consensus on why it is happening. In other words, we should not wait for all of the I's to be dotted and the T's to be crossed before taking action to reduce our exposure to radio frequency radiation. We understand that when a new threat is identified, the potential future impact is still uncertain. The public's health and the health of the environment are clearly threatened by the rapidly evolving wireless technologies. But with exposures increasing and coming from so many sources, the cumulative impacts of wireless radiation in Canada on human health has the potential to be great and to be underestimated at present. Let me speak to only one example of the inadequacy of Health Canada's review. The section on brain cancer is scientifically flawed. The report consistently ignores or diminishes published scientific studies that clearly show harmful effects at exposure levels be below current safety limits. In another example, statistically significant changes to sperm DNA and sperm motility and viability have been found from cell phone radiation exposures well below what the average man receives from putting an active phone in his front pocket. Many studies have also shown damage to DNA from microwaves and from extremely low frequency radiation, but these results guidelines. We urgently call on Health Canada for the following. Number one, to intervene in what we see as an emerging public health crisis. Number two, to establish guidelines based on the best available scientific data, including studies on cancer, on DNA damage, on stress responses, on cognitive and neurologic disorders, on impaired reproduction, developmental effects, learning and behavioral problems among children and youth, and the broad range of symptoms classified as electrohypersensitivity or EHS. And finally, number three, to advise Canadians to limit their exposure, and expo especially the exposure to children. Thank you very much. affected my immune system. My body started to react to all kinds of things, chemical products, perfumes, and soaps, to name just a few. About a year after, I began to experience symptoms when I would use a microwave oven or a cellular phone. These symptoms, headaches, pain in my eyes, and electric shocks in my face and head would start as soon as I was diagnosed chemically sensitive by doctors in Quebec and Ontario after my poisoning. I experienced severe allergic reactions to all kinds of product, but I still use my cell phone on a regular basis. So when the symptoms started while using my cell phone, being a health professional, I had to confirm to myself that electrosensitivity was now my reality. In my case, it was easy to prove, because unfortunately my condition worsened rapidly. If someone activated a cellular phone near me, without me having any prior knowledge of this fact, both of my legs would paralyze for a few hours. It got so bad, convulsions, blood vessels erupting, extreme muscle weakness, 
that I had to live isolated with my mother, who took care of me. We had no TV, no computer, a cooler on the balcony as our refrigerator, and most of the time, no lights and no heat, and this in the midst of winter. I would di I, it was diagnosed as electrosensitivity. It was treated like electrosensitivity, and with hard work, I was able to get better. Mais j'ai dû travailler excessivement fort pour recouvrir ma santé et redevenir pleinement fonctionnel. Par contre, depuis quelques mois, je dois à nouveau me battre pour demeurer en santé. L'électrosensibilité peut s'expliquer ainsi. Nous avons tous un vase dans lequel nous accumulons et éliminons nos toxines. Lorsque l'accumulation surpasse l'élimination et le vase déborde, les symptômes se manifestent. Avec le déploiement des compteurs intelligents qui fait actuellement rage au Québec et la panoplie de systèmes Wi-Fi installés dans les immeubles et endroits publics, je suis maintenant réduite à dormir dans mon sous-sol pour récupérer suffisamment pour faire mes journées et être avec vous ici aujourd'hui. Mais maintenant, des pièces de ma maison sont condamnées. Je ne peux plus aller voir des patients à domicile. Je dois éviter des restaurants et plusieurs endroits publics. Dans la réalité, l'électrosensibilité égale une perte de liberté. In real life, electrosensitivity equals a loss of freedom. I was not even able to finish typing up my testimony yesterday because my symptoms were too severe and so I needed to recuperate to be here today. Up to one person out of four will become electrosensitive. But a few or even one is too much and believe me, you do not want your child a parent or yourself to be this person. Thank you. Merci. Well, thank you. Okay, are there, um, it's, that ends our formal presentations. Are there any questions from any of the members from the media? Yes, please. Yes, it is the case. Uh, I think the problem with Health Canada, and this is a problem uh, not only in Canada but other places, is the fallacious assumption that there cannot be any adverse effect in biological systems from radio frequency exposure that is not caused by tissue heating. And this is held as a article of faith and when you have that as an article of faith, then you feel that you can discard every study that shows that that is not the case. I, I liken this to the people that swore that the earth was flat because you couldn't see the, the edge of the earth. Uh, how can you ignore the hundreds and thousands of studies in the best scientific journals done by very good scientists that show not only biological effects, but elevations in risks of cancer, of infertility, of other diseases in human populations. Now it is true that there are some things we don't know. We don't know exactly the mechanisms whereby these effects are mediated. We also don't have a lot of evidence of cancer and other diseases in animals. But we have the evidence in people. And that's who we care about, and that's who Health Canada should be protecting. On a supplement, I, I just want to ask you and Cindy for your recommendations, but how do you go about minimizing the exposure in schools, practically, because what do you do? And in terms of guidelines on exposure limits, you know, should there, are you calling for limits on exposure to the number of hours on a cell phone, or your bathing suit, or your, your, your excursion in the net, or whatever? Give me a sense of that, both in schools uh, uh, yes, I, I think it's, we should be uh, limiting, especially limiting exposure to children in schools, 100%. You can, you can have access to the internet. Teachers in Ontario and in Canada are asking for the ability to simply just turn off the router in the classroom when they don't. We're asking school boards to educate parents and say there's a certain amount of time that, that there are organizations that suggest that at the age of, under the age of uh, four or five in Belgium, it's illegal to sell cell phones to children under seven years of age. Uh, we're not educating parents, we're not educating teachers, we're not educating students 
on that that is a radioactive device that you're using and you should be limiting the time. Uh, when you talk about other exposures, Bluetooth and all that, yes, it's, it, it's about educating and, and let people make a conscious decision. If I choose to smoke cigarettes today, then I know there's some harm from that. Today, people aren't aware, the general public is not aware that there is harm from even 30 minutes of exposure to a cell phone. The general public's not aware that if you put a cell phone in your, if you're a young lady, you put it in your bra, if you're a young man, you put it in your pants pocket, there is danger. So yes, we are, we are proposing uh, a broad uh, education program, an awareness program, and we are proposing that people impose their own limits once they're educated on the potential dangers. If I can add to that, there is no reason to have Wi-Fi in schools. There is every reason why every child should have access to the internet. But a wired access to the internet will not generate radio frequency radiation exposure. What unfortunately is happening is that many schools will have a computer, a wireless computer classroom where every child will have their laptop connected to one router. The radi radio frequency exposure in that circumstance is enormous. And of course, the latency for many of these diseases is long, so our concern is what diseases will occur in the future. Nobody is saying don't use your cell phone, but if you use your cell phone with smart meters. Uh, there are just so many things that can be done that will reduce exposure without enormous inconvenience or enormous expense. But the first step is to have everybody, especially children, aware of the fact that there's danger from excessive exposure to radio frequency radiation. Well, I, I think it's, it, the question is how do you educate children? children? Well, part of the education system, we, when we teach children about stranger danger, we teach children about how to ride a bike safely, we teach children in high school how to drive properly. Why, why are we not teaching students at an early age about how to use a, how to use a laptop properly, uh, when to use it, when not to use it, how to use a cell phone? So we educate children all the time. This is just another subject matter that we, we have the material, we have the, we have the proof, we have the science, we have the the um, organizations that are gi giving guidelines for how much exposure you should be you should be using, so it's a matter of educating. That's what part of our, our call, and the physicians' call to health Canada say, uh, educate and aware and make people aware. And this is why the the safety code six issue is such an important one, because if governments fail to give any warning to parents, to teachers, and even to children, then the general public is going to pass this off as it's not something very important. That's why it's so important that the Safety Code 6 as proposed be revised so that the public understands there are dangers here. The exact magnitude of the danger is still somewhat uncertain. But there, that there is danger is not uncertain by any means. I don't think it's a matter of trying to, to compete with telcos or whatever. This is a, an education awareness program that we we should be stepping up and assuming <coughs> taking responsibility for. And and whoever is on the other side of that debate, then they can present their case if they wish. But uh, it, it's, it's irrespective of who's on the other side of the debate on how important this issue is and what we should be doing to educate children. And as Dr. Carpenter says, it starts with the government stepping up and saying there's a, pro there's a potential issue here and acknowledging it and not using a safety standard that was created first in 1979. There's always a challenge, but yes, but that doesn't mean you don't do it and that doesn't mean you don't step up and you don't invest the, the energy and the resources to do it. We, we talk about some of the countries, so uh, as Dr. Carpenter mentioned, uh, sorry, the question is uh, how does Canada compare to other countries? 
Um, so um, if you compare, the, we're, the, we're the same as the UK, the US, uh, Australia, and uh, New Zealand. Uh, there are some leading countries uh, such as China, uh, Russia, Italy, Switzerland that have guidelines 100 times safer than ours. The European uh, Parliamentary Council has issued directives and guidance to countries to say use the precautionary principle which says until we're more aware you should be reducing radiation levels. So there's really um, a mixture. Uh, India has done some regulation on reducing their cell tower emissions by 10 percent over the next uh, several years. I don't know, Dr. Carpenter, you may have more experience internationally. Well, I, I think the debate is, is occurring internationally in almost every country. Uh, I think one very important agency is the World Health Organization. And as, as I said in my comments, both the power line fields and the radio frequency fields have been rated by the World Health Organization as possible human carcinogens. Now, many of us were disappointed that that was not a stronger recommendation. But the World Health Organization uh, usually deals with chemicals, and in chemicals, usually there are animal models and you understand mechanisms. They, what the World Health Organization acknowledges is that there is human data that these exposures lead to cancer, but there isn't a good understanding of the mechanisms. From my point of view, that says we should do everything we can to reduce human exposure, while, of course, we continue to search for mechanisms. So the, the debate is occurring in almost every country in the world, uh, some more than others. It's interesting, some of the countries like India and Turkey are hotbeds of research on this issue and are proposing legislative restrictions. But uh, it's, it's not an easy thing to uh, fight the power and the money of the, t of the industry nor the domination of some of these national and international panels by people from the engineering and physics community that basically deny that there can be any health effect that's not mediated uh, except by tissue heating. I'll, I'll repeat the question. Yeah, the question is, well, we mentioned 139 studies that were uh, ignored by Health Canada. Uh, and are they on our website? Yeah, absolutely. There's a web